Less is more. Probably means something different to everybody, but it also kind of depends on the situation. But for the most part, I like using it as an excuse to be lazy. Like with social media, less is more. Like with taking trips, doing laundry, less is more. Like with texting, less is more. But you still gotta be responsible sometimes. So maybe less with what's distracting and more with what's important. Actually, maybe even less with what's important as well. Because less is more. Besides my ignorance as the eldest son, uh, what does this mean for fashion? Well, I think the magic comes from the fact that it's kind of up for interpretation, but also it really does give you an excuse to be lazy. But we'll get back to that later. The real beauty is that minimalism can kind of mean anything to anyone. And in a subjective world, that means everything. So with that being said, let's get into why minimalism is fashion's golden aesthetic. To truly immerse myself and understand the concept of minimalism in fashion, I was gonna do the usual and study hundreds of minimal fits, pieces, color palettes, mood boards, maybe even cut out some unnecessary luxuries out of my life, like my phone or my, or my dog. Maybe even cut my wardrobe down to like just a capsule for a month so that I could truly understand the nuance of the discipline. But right before I was about to embark on that journey, I remembered. Less is more, baby. So then instead, I just stared at this white t-shirt for three hours. But I think we can all agree. I think the appeal in minimalist design is the elegance in simplicity and ambiguity, starting with traditional art. This one you've probably seen before. It's a really popular one called Composition 2 with red, blue, and yellow. It's by Piet Mondrian. It's had a big influence by its use of literal color blocking. Or this piece called Die von Hoch by Frank Stella with some nuanced contrast. Just very little, yet so much going on at the same time. Just kind of reminds me of like the dust on a laptop's fans, you know? But I could be wrong, I just kind of... Just... You know, because like less is more. And this yellow piece by Ellsworth Kelly. Guess what this one's called? But not even just art, like minimalist interior design is kind of the meta for all apartments right now. Because you're getting the best value out of doing nothing. Just makes your apartment look clean and organized and neat, you know, because to clean it up, all you gotta do is push a chair in. It's just kind of a blank canvas so that everyone with all different types of tastes, no matter how it evolves, you'll find a way to relate to it because it's nothing you know, or it, it's as close to nothing as it can get. You know, I just thought of, this is the true minimal interior design. You wish you could be this minimal. But I'm telling you though, some of these minimalism fits be kind of looking like those apartments, not this one. Actually, some of y'all look like this one too. But these ones, bro, just Scandinavian minimalist interior design. Dude, this looks like the tech startup Chad. Like just some of these living areas just look like the inside of an Achilles low. Post minimalism fits. Was that a restoration hardware, bro? Maybe the parallels aren't as layered as they seem, you know? Some of y'all really be looking like this goddamn couch. But the organic nature of post-minimalism has been making waves everywhere. Especially TikTok, bro. This, this stuff is like crack for the algorithm. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a get ready with me video and the dude's like, Hey guys, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go um, I'm gonna go like get coffee or whatever. And I here are my options, all right? First option is this white tea, you know? It's really simple, it's nice. The second option is this white tea. Uh, this one's also really nice. You know what, I'm, I'm feeling pretty casual. I'm gonna go with the white tea. And yeah, just feeling pretty casual. Anyways, here are my $800 Margella tabbies. Forgot to mention that uh, I might be minimal, but my bank account isn't. And then bam, two million views on TikTok, and, and I banged the barista because I brought a tote bag. But minimal pieces, whether they be $800 Balenciaga phantoms, or a pair of 990s. I think the core element that ties them together is versatility. The amount of use and variation you get from a wardrobe consisting of pieces that all fall under that minimal aesthetic is unmatched. Just everything goes with everything because there's not a lot of room for clashing when you've mixed down all your pieces down to the shape and color. Pieces with elements inspired by a certain time period or just specific types of style cues can kind of hinder their versatility when you're styling outside of that palette. Like it would be kind of hard to pair a leather biker jacket with like utilitarian cargo pants because the style cues are just 
of, from different palettes. But it would be easy to pair a leather jacket with some straight fit jeans because of the simplistic nature of both of them. And also, those guys can also mix with the biker jacket and the cargos. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot to work with. The convenience of it's probably gonna go together is priceless when it comes to building a wardrobe. Who wouldn't want to just wake up first thing in the morning, throw on the first thing they think of, and it probably works out? I can't tell you how many times I've been late to something trying to figure out what of my clean clothes work together at the moment. Like, I'm just tired of thinking, bro. I just want to throw on the first thing I see and leave with confidence. I want to bang the barista too. The figurative, the metaphorical barista? I guess it's a metaphor now. I want to bang the metaphorical barista too. I think a perfect example of this convenience in action was this capsule wardrobe that Tim DeSint made in one of his latest videos. Nine pieces to make nine outfits. With each piece maintaining a rather simple set of style elements with the most graphic being a script on a hat. Also, bam, crazy expensive hat. What is going on with your bank accounts? He's able to make nine different fits for nine different scenarios. Bam, that's like nine coffee shops that you can go to. That's nine baristas getting pleaded metaphorically, hypothetically, figuratively. Back to what I was saying about being lazy. No matter how many clothes you have, bro, fashion boils down to how hard you want to try in the morning. And if you don't have to try to look good in the clothes you have, why would you ever try? Like, sure, you can sit there, right, every morning, feel like you're the greatest coming up with some super technical maximalist outfit that might get you on grailed fits or streetwears. What did you wear today? The Mount Rushmore of communal clout. It must feel good, but how many times can you do that until you run out of clothes, bro? You know? Better yet, how many times could you do that before you default back to a hoodie? Because... Bro, it always goes back to the hoodie. It always goes back to the hoodie. In Maslow's hierarchy of needs, 99% of fashion is up here, bro. That is all self-fulfillment. The only physiological need that you have is warmth. And when it's cold, right, what is gonna keep you warm? Your Yeezys? No. The hoodie will always be there. Even if we're talking psychological needs, bro, when you are sad and crying, and need comfort? Who's gonna comfort you? Your therapist? No, your hoodie. Your hoodie will be there for you. In some cultures, the only necessity you really need in life is your relationship with God or a higher power, you know? Cause that is the end game for all creation. This includes the Rick Owens Soho store. And in biblical scripture, the number seven holds immense symbolic significance. From the seven days in a full week with the seventh and final day being the Sabbath to seven being synonymous with the word full and complete in Hebrew, you know, they are literally the same consonants. It's the same word. We associate the number seven with God and six with man as six will never be higher than seven. And why was six afraid of seven? Correct because seven has the power to plunge your soul into a perpetual hell for all of eternity unless you are slaying at our fathers and throwing 20s in the communal basket on Sundays. And now realizing the significance of seven, bro, how many letters are in the word hoodie? H-O-O-D-I-E. S, hoodies. Hoodies, seven letters, baby. Hoodies are the sartorial equivalent to God. Seven letters. Hoodies are seven. So the effectiveness of minimalism comes from when you mix your wardrobe down to its lowest effort pieces and still have potential to create something cool. Like when you eventually default back to a hoodie, and trust me, he will be back. Soon. In a minimal wardrobe, you still have immense potential to create an interesting silhouette with the pieces at your disposal. And there's less having to think of, oh, does this graphic match? Or, oh, does this, is this pattern clashing? Without that, you kind of make outfit building more fluid and consistent. Plus, a minimal aesthetic inherently just feels more mature. The loud and abrasive streetwear aesthetics to a calm, minimal palette overcorrection pipeline 
is inevitable. Plus, if you have no personality, you finally have a style that speaks for you. Nothing screams free on the weekends like a pair of 990s. But to break it down to some pieces popping right now, we got some oversized crew necks. You know, just even drop shoulder crew necks even. Like this is a really nice piece. Whether it be plain or textured, I feel like the real focus is on the shape and flow. You see this in interior design too when people refer to the feng shui of the place. You know, that actually just means flow, I think. You know, but the term feng shui definitely adds a couple bands to your real estate value. So we're just going to say that some of these sweaters have feng shui. Am I saying it right? Another is pleated trousers, bro. You're seeing this everywhere. It's a big emphasis on the flow and the shape, but with interesting features like the pleats and the crop. Popular shoes consist of black leather boots and white sneakers. This should be a staple in every wardrobe, but I feel like in minimalist uh, aesthetics specifically, it really does a good job at highlighting the beauty of both of those. Personally, I still really like rocking my black Saint Laurent Chelsea's. I've been running with those for like five years now, but now you're seeing stuff like Wheaties and Tabbies making huge waves. And Tabbies are a controversial one, you know? Tabbies would also look absolutely deranged with just a regular pair of skinnies and a graphic tee or whatever a lot of your guys' wardrobes consist of right now. But with core pieces, right? Like with minimalist pieces, I feel like the flow is very seamless. But also I feel like tabbies and mall core is the embodiment of this chant. So do as I say, not as I do. Or do nothing at all. Because less is more. And now for color palettes, it's pretty simple. A lot of people like the gray scale. It's very easy. But there's also been a lot of inclusion of primary colors and just very simple color blocking with a lot of these new post-minimal fits coming up. You can get some amazing looks and I'm also not gonna do another video on color. I just did one a month ago and I also did one five years ago. And guess what? Since then, no new colors have been released, bro. I think the movement to prioritize modularity over situational styling is huge and I like where it's going. But no matter where the trend takes us, bro, there will always be a morning where you wake up and your brain is on airplane mode. Happens to the best of us, bro. And when that happens, you will always find your way back to a hoodie. 777, angle numbers, power of God, minimalism is the Messiah, but also I am agnostic. Thanks for watching the video and hopefully maybe now you can do less. Maybe if this gets you to do nothing, I actually kind of did my job better than if you were to go out and change your aesthetic because less is more. Anyways, I made an impact on your life whether you like it or not. Have a big clothing brand project coming up. But for now, follow me on Instagram and everything at Vans at the Met Gala and Twitter at JK underscore Wiling if you really are that bored. But Vans at the Met Gala and everything, go to my Instagram. New podcast, season two. We're going crazy. Here's a clip. Um, everything will be in the description. I feel like you should watch that. With the podcast, it is reverse minimalism. It is maximalism, it and it is also uh, 666. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you in the next one. Tune in next time. Yep. Should we get some thumbnails? Yeah, let's do like um su surprise, like uh, scared. I don't know. Like, like I... Uh, yeah, like, uh, like, yeah. Yeah, I, think, I feel like that was good. Yeah, I think that's, I think they were good. All right. Okay. <laughs> Bottoms up. And the devil laughs.